So on Friday I said I wanted to make a video about all the books I read during January, and I still want to, so I'm going to. The first book I read was The Book Thief by Marcus Zizak. You'll find this in the young adult section of any bookstore. I'm not really even sure why. It didn't seem much like young adult fiction to me. Yeah, it was really well written. The narrator was just really, really interesting. Um, and it was set in Nazi Germany, and it kind of made you understand the minds of, like, what normal people were going through during that whole thing. Like, imagine you're a painter, and you live in Nazi Germany, and you're not a member of the Nazi party, and because of that, nobody hires you to paint their house, so you just can't work, you can't do the thing that you know how to do. That kind of stinks, but is it worth joining the Nazi party for? I don't know. I don't see how you cannot find that kind of thing really interesting. I would seriously recommend that for anyone. It's a very, very good book. I I was so impressed. Then the next book I read, you've already seen it. Well, you've already seen it if you've watched all these videos. It's A Naked Singularity by Sergio de la Pava. I had never heard of it before, and it's not very well known. And I kind of like the story about how it became published as much as I like the book itself. In fact, an article I read about it when I was looking up that story called it The Antidote to Fifty Shades of Grey, and that just made me like it all the more. It was originally self-published, and nobody, you know, nobody really reviewed it, because why on earth would you review a 600-page self-published book that, you know, couldn't get published professionally, wasn't edited or anything, and it just didn't really go anywhere. But then, eventually, a few people started to notice that it's actually really good, and that led to the University of Chicago Press starting to print it professionally. And now it's got, you know, some hype around it. I still hadn't heard of it, even though it's, like, exactly up my alley. So, you know, not famous or anything, but it's doing pretty well. And then I read Siddhartha by Herman Hesse, and I don't know how many of those I just pronounced right. And at that point, I realized that I couldn't even figure out my favorite book I've read this month was. Seriously, they were all so good. And then I read a collection of short stories by Samuel Beckett. I don't really know what I think about that yet. Uh, he's one of those really literary, like, he was, um, like, a friend of James Joyce, like, one of Joyce's disciples or whatever, who, like, followed him around and all that stuff and then ended up very well respected in his own right, but I hadn't really heard a lot about him, but I wanted to check him out, because I, I like to stay well-rounded when I'm reading. And yeah, it was interesting, but I feel like you have to really know what you're talking about to get a lot out of Samuel Beckett. So I bought this little, you know, 200-page book. It's called The Complete Critical Guide to Samuel Beckett, and I'm like halfway through that one now. It's helps a lot. I understand a lot more, and I'm glad to continue learning about literature after college. So yeah, that's what I've read this month. Oh, I've also been listening to an audiobook of The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I don't know how to pronounce his name. That's pretty cool, too. It's just fantasy. It's very genre, um, but it's got the kind of magic that I like, which is the magic that is kind of explained and sounds like it could happen in a conceivable world and it always plays by its own rules and it has, you know, its own internal logic even if it's nothing that could actually happen in the real world. If if you're gonna put magic in a book, I guess that's the way to do it. There's a couple things I don't like about it, but nothing major. It's nice and simple and easy to read or listen to. So now that Sister has ditched us, Steven, this is just us now. We get to decide what we want to do. I kind of like having the best thing, worst thing videos on Friday for both of us. Do we want to keep doing that? And what days work best for you to make videos? And what days work best for me to make videos? Let me know. Maybe for all of February we can just do like every weekday or every day or something different. I don't care. I like doing this and I have more time to do it than you so it's kind of up to you but I like doing this. So yeah, talk to me about schedules and what you would like to do. 
because I would like to do a bunch of things. And yeah, tomorrow's Monday, and we had been deciding what to do for our Monday, Tuesday videos beforehand. But we didn't, so just talk about whatever you feel like, and then... I don't know. We'll figure it out. We have no plans from here. Yay!